Welcome back, knuckleheads. I am Lupine Fiasco, and this is Daily Fab Gameplay. For anyone who's new to the channel, welcome to the jungle. What we do here is review replays of games that I played on the Talishar client days or weeks ago, after enough time has passed, that I lose my bias and can more objectively judge the quality of my play. I will talk through turn cycles and give my thoughts on the line I would take now compared to the line I took then at the time of recording. We either reinforce good play patterns or identify areas for improvement for the purpose of tightening and improving our gameplay in the future to take down paper events like the upcoming skirmish and ProQuest season and, most importantly, walk away with that shiny, shiny cardboard. If you'd like to check out the list I'm playing here or try it for yourself on Talishar, there is a Fabry deck link in the video description below. While you're down there, if you haven't already done so, please consider a YouTube subscription. It is the best free way to support me and to make sure that you see daily fab gameplay in your video feed five days a week. The best paid way to support me is through Patreon, and a Patreon link is also in the video description. A Patreon subscription will get you access to the DFG Discord and the shiny, shiny cardboard Talishar Cardback. At higher tiers, your name will appear in every DFG video, and you could receive bonus DFG content every week. Daily Fab gameplay will always be free five days a week, so those who can afford to patronize me, I truly appreciate it. I also now am on X, and if you would like to see memes, inane comments, and the occasional self-promotion, head on over to X and follow Lupine Fiasco. Now, without further ado, let's talk about our sideboard and about our game plan. Happy Monday! We're back with KO. We're in our comfort zone, and comfort is spelled with a K. Playing against Victor today, and I wanted to show you this game because Victor is a reason that I think Kao may be a good pick in Amsterdam. He is a reasonable counter to Zen, in as much as any deck could be a counter to the explosiveness of Zen. Um, any deck that can comfortably run Command and Conquer plus Pummel is going to be effective at slowing down aggro decks. Now, whether Victor can slow Zen down enough to actually be competitively viable is another question that I won't be answering today. But I think Kao had game into Victor back in the heavy hitters meta, even when Victors were teching into Kao. And now that Victors are not teching into Kao, I think they are a much worse matchup um, or a much better matchup into Kao. Their Kao matchup is much worse. We've won the die roll. We are going to go second. That's going to let us block any kind of big attack from Victor on turn zero. Very likely, Victor will just arsenal and pass. Uh, our equipment loadout is exactly what you would think it to be. Uh, Victor and Warrior is the reason that I still have cast bones in the sideboard compared to. Um, Really, Prism Tech would probably be the other direction to go. Uh, if we look at the U.S. National second place KO list, they were on three uh, red Agile windup instead of Cast Bones. I've heard that KO does have game into Victor without Cast Bones, but with Cast Bones just makes it such a better matchup. We are taking Send Packing out to put Cast Bones into the 60. Send Packing is a good card against Victor. There are going to be hands where Victor doesn't want to block. Um, send Packing is not the same as it is against a Warrior or maybe Enigma, where they actively do want to be blocking us. Victor will have hands where he would prefer to keep resources to E-Strike, Go Again, uh, Attack, or CNC Pummel. That said, Victor can block. He can block very well. We do just want to play our bare 60 here so that we have more opportunity to see Cast Bones and Blood Rush, and that's why Send Packing is coming out. Um, weakest Link, not effective against Victor. Amnesia could have acute interaction with Gold and the Golden Sun, but is more cute than good, not something we want to bring in. And 
with the number of defense reactions that Victor could be playing, yellow pulping is probably more of a liability than an asset. Uh, additionally, sometimes we do want to block as much as we're running yellow bear fangs now. Our deck is not as blocky as it used to be. Uh, sometimes we do want to block. For the most part, we're just outvaluing Victor. Uh, he is going to attempt to clash with us. We have a very good shot at winning or at least not losing the clash. If we can win or not lose the first clash or two against Victor, we're in a really great position to win the game. Even if we do lose those clashes and Victor draws his cards, we're still in a fine position to win the game. Victor's value really comes on defense, depending on how his disruption lines up with our armor and any sort of blood rush or cast bones turn. We may just be able to go over the top with Savage Sash Blood Rush. This is not the same kind of mid-range grind that it used to be. Savage Sash really pushes us towards being more aggressive, and that is what we are going to look to do in this game. The opening hand here is fine. Uh, we really are just putting our hands in uh, fate. Did Victor draw into the sink below? I guess more importantly, if he did draw, did he arsenal it? Pulping coming for six, uh, dominate go again. Unfortunately, we do replace a blue with a yellow, so we do not get to mandible claw swing big this turn. Because Victor has blocked with armor, I like attacking with Swing Big more than I like attacking with Mandible Claw and Arsenaling a Wild Ride. I am interested in pushing Swing Big damage while Victor is not in a position to take advantage of the Swing Big block effect. Uh, Victor could give us two cards and another piece of armor to block eight and get a Quicken Token from the Swing Big. I just don't feel that he would be capitalizing on that Quicken token very well. We keep our arsenal empty in case of a Command and Conquer. That isn't something that I think is really a priority in this matchup. It isn't that I'm trying to keep my arsenal open. Uh, but in this situation, considering that Victor clearly wants to keep these cards in hand, I want to take advantage of that and attack with the swing big. No blocks and no defense reactions. Uh, it means that Victor really wants to keep five cards here, going down to 30 to do so. We draw into a really interesting hand that um, does nothing except for set up really well. So we're staring down a uh, overpowered Golden Sun with Victor floating two resource and having two cards in hand. At least one of those cards is a pummel. It's the easiest decision we've ever had to make. Um, considering what the other card is, is really the challenge of this turn. Uh, Victor didn't block from hand on his last turn. So keeping two cards was very intentional. One of them is a pummel. The question is, are they both pummels? Meaning that if we block the Scowling Fleshbag, is there even a chance that we can hit the pummel and then not get pummeled? Or are they both pummels? Um, we can't hit one. We're going to get pummeled, absolutely. Or would Victor take some weird intellect penalty line where keeping a card for the arsenal was worth more to him than just blocking and i i struggle to see a world where victor would know that we have flesh bag and hold on to like a choke slam or an e-strike or something to try to arsenal because if our flesh bag gets lucky victor took three more damage than he really needed to and takes an intellect penalty so either this card in hand is not a pummel and Victor's really playing the odds or they are both pummels and Fleshbag cannot help us and if Fleshbag can't help us we're not going to block with it. How we are going to block is with a run rough shot. So we'll block three when we get pummeled we will discard our other run rough shot then we will play cast bones and arsenal blood rush bellow. 
Now, if Victor doesn't have a pummel, we're going to take an intellect penalty because um, I'm not going to roll scabs here. I want to just play my cast bones, and if I have to hold on to a run rough shot, um, that, that is what it is. So we do get pummeled, uh, surprising no one. Discard our second run rough shot. Uh, we'll play cast bones, arsenal blood rush. We lose this might token. Um, there's a world where we mandible claw for four and then arsenal the cast bones. Arsenal and cast bones, really never a bad thing to do. It gets it out of our hand so that we don't discard it to a wild ride or a pulping. And if we get to follow a wild ride or a pulping with a cast bones, that's incredible value. But setting up cast bones blood rush with all of our armor means that we're about to have a really fire turn. Um, there is also value to be gained by not attacking Victor on our setup turn and not giving him the opportunity to turn block cards into value. So if we cast bones pass, say Victor has a test of strength or a trounce in hand, He's just stuck with that now. He can't block with it. So now the turn goes to him and he has a red card that pitches poorly and can't attack. Um, this isn't something that we are putting Victor on all of the time. Um, this is not to say that anytime you don't attack Victor, he's gonna have a block card, but unlike other heroes, um, your warriors, for example, uh, any of the faster matchups where we take cast bones out for this purpose, um, Victor, exclusive among the guardians, exclusive among heroes, has the chance to just have really bad reds on offense. Um, our cast bones uh, shows us that we have two blues left on top of our deck. Uh, so if we draw a discard, well, we'll play Blood Rush and we'll draw into two blues. And we can plan our turn around that. Uh, let's just really take a quick look at Victor's pitch stack right now. Trounce, Spinal Crush, Sink Below. This was 100% a turn where Victor really wanted us to attack him so that at the very least he could block with a Trounce or Sink a Red and try to find something playable. Instead, because we just cast Bones Pass, he needs to spend four cards and a tunic to do eight points of damage with choke slam. So really, really good value and always something to think about when you're deciding whether to throw some marginal damage at a victor or just pass. The chance that he could just have a really good defensive hand that's really bad on offense. We're staring at a choke slam for eight. Uh, eight damage in itself, not a problem. We're about to really just punch Victor in the mouth with Cast Bones Blood Rush. What Chokeslam does for us is take our mites away from any of our attack actions. Um, it's obviously very bad. It also ruins our Blood Rush. So we could get around the crush effect of a Chokeslam if we wanted to just hold on to the Blood Rush. What we could think about doing here is pitching our wild ride to attack with a mandible claw. Mandible claw dodges the choke slam crush effect and would get the benefit of six mites. And then we command and conquer. Uh, discard one of our agile windups, make might and agility, and just blood rush next turn. But we have a really good blood rush lined up, right? We're going to. Pitch our blue Agile Windup, play Blood Rush. We're gonna draw two more blues. We either keep a Command and Conquer that's online, has 12 power and go again, or we get to Wild Ride and try to draw into some gas. We've got a Savage Sash. This is gonna be a really, really good turn. So let's just block with our armor. We don't have to get the Flesh Bag here. We can block with Bone Breaker, Sash, and Scab Skins. And we lose some potential value from the Bone Breaker because we're not going to block from hand. We don't get that Might token. But we have a five card Blood Rush with Agility, Savage Sash, and six Mites. Uh, we will be taking Victor's hand 
or dealing a substantial amount of damage to him and most likely doing both. So first step, play the Blood Rush, even decide if we want to break Sash this turn. We get to keep a Wild Ride and a Command and Conquer, which is incredible. Uh, if we use our floating two resources to play Command and Conquer, we can then follow that by pitching a blue into Mandible Claw, pitching another blue into Wild Ride. We would have two floating resources. I think this is a hand where we break Sash. Uh, we are going to have enough cards in hand and enough resources that we easily get to work a fourth attack into this combat chain. So we'll start by breaking Sash. Then we will play Command and Conquer. We can follow the Command and Conquer with Wild Ride. Um, we will very likely discard one of our blues, but um, at the very least, let's see what happens with Command and Conquer. Victor gives us a Trounce and blocks 12. Now the Trounce uh, does not win, but does not lose, so we tie. And we see that we have a run rough shot on top of our deck. So if we play our wild ride here, we have a 33% chance of discarding our run rough shot and a 66% chance of keeping it. And if we keep our run rough shot, then we get to uh, follow the wild ride with mandible claw and run rough shot. So let's attack with wild ride. If we do discard our Run Rough Shot here, um, it's a little unfortunate. We have to make a choice between Mandible Claw, Arsenal of Blue, or just play a blue. But we are the greatest Flesh and Blood player, so we do not have to choose. We just get to Claw, Run Rough Shot, and put 12 more damage into this turn. Now that 12 is unlikely to connect, Victor's going to give us that Civic Steps. We uh just attack with run rough shot there is no world where we just pass and hold on to that quicken we want to get our bonus two damage now we also are not afraid to arsenal a run rough shot we're not ashamed of it but if we can attack with it versus potentially not being able to attack with it on our next turn let's just get rid of it now the hand we draw into is pretty interesting. Um, Blood Rush number two this early is really good, but the hand alongside of it is potentially not. Uh, E-Strike in hand makes me not want to play uh, Blood Rush Bellow. If we play Blood Rush, we pitch a blue, we discard one of our other blues. We float two resources, we've got this E-Strike, but depending on what we draw, our best line might just be Mandible Claw, E-Strike for seven. If my Blood Rush is only getting plus two value, it was not a good Blood Rush. And with E-Strike uh, as a two card seven, what we can do instead is just E-Strike, give it plus two, uh, give it a third power from the Might. So we attack for eight, and then we get to discard our Mighty Windup to make two mites and arsenal blood rush. Um, eight damage with two more points of value and a blood rush and arsenal is a lot better than uh, a blood rush that potentially only attacks for 12 and gets an arsenal. Um, that is to say 10 value plus a blood rush and arsenal is much better in KO than 12 damage with a random arsenal. Uh, keeping in mind, Kao has very bad blues in his deck. It's very unlikely that a blue in your arsenal is going to be good value. Uh, really awkward hand to draw into. This is not a hand where we can just block with like a cast bones and then play a blood rush from arsenal. We have to cover the six from Command and Conquer if we want to keep our Blood Rush and Arsenal, but we also then have to decide how we're going to use the cards in our hand. It's a, it's a weird one. Having three non-attack actions between our Arsenal and our hand, staring down a Command and Conquer is weird and shouldn't usually happen all that often. We also have to contend with the fact 
that Victor has two resources floating, and this card in Arsenal has been there since the Pummel turn, when we uh, potentially identified that Victor had two Pummels. And if Victor did have two Pummels, this card in Arsenal is that Pummel. So, that means we have to play around CNC Pummel. But we also have to play around it not being Pummel. Maybe it's a Sink Below that Victor just hasn't wanted to use. Maybe it's a Red Chokeslam that Victor has never had the opportunity to get value from. Um, because we don't know what that second card was. So what are we doing if it is Pummel? If it is Pummel, then what we would want to do is block with a Riled Up, get hit by the Pummel, take seven. We discard our Wild Ride and we lose our Blood Rush in Arsenal. Then we make the same Cast Bones play, where we play Cast Bones, uh, hope that we hit off the top, Arsenal, Blood Rush, and just sit and wait for Victor's next turn. That's if this is a Pummel in Arsenal. If this is not a Pummel in Arsenal, then just blocking with our blue, losing our Blood Rush, and then being in this weird spot where what do we do with the three cards in our hand, two of which are non-attack actions, is just awkward. It's a bad spot for us to be in. We can't really do much with that hand. We could play Blood Rush, pitch Cast Bones, discard Wild Ride, and hope that we draw a blue and a run Roughshod for Claw. It's bad. So we are going to uh, make a really weird play. We can, there are a few things we could do. We could block with Blood Rush Bell and Cast Bones from hand. If it isn't Pummel, we play Blood Rush, pitch our Wild Up, discard Wild Ride, have two resources, two cards. We could block, we could not block at all. Um, we could block with Cast Bones, lose our Blood Rush, make the same play. We could block with Flesh Bag, Scab Skin Leathers, and Riled Up. Get Pummeled, discard our Wild Ride. So what we are asking ourselves is, were we right turns ago that the two cards in Victor's hand were both Pummels? And if I did not block with Flesh Bag there, if I said these are both Pummels, Flesh Bag doesn't matter, then I am sticking with that. Victor has not shown me any evidence that this card in Arsenal is not Pummel. So I'm going to play as if it's Pummel. And what that means is I'm going to block with Riled Up, Flesh Bag, and Scab Skin Leathers. If it isn't Pummel, we're in a weird spot. Our hand is very awkward. We play a Blood Rush, we pitch a Cast Bones, and we hope that second Blood Rush in our arsenal can save us. We draw some clunky stuff, but we really are assuming that this card in Victor's arsenal is a pummel. And we did correctly identify that Victor took a bunch of damage and maybe tried to bait our flesh bag or at least played around it because he did have two pummels. So we get pummeled, we lose our Blood Rush and Arsenal, we get to discard our Wild Ride. This isn't good. We're not looking at this CNC pummel like, yeah, we did it. But we are looking at it like we get to set up. We've seen two pummels out of Victor now. We're not letting him filter. There is a very good chance that this next turn just goes off completely undisrupted. Victor uses the Tunic, plays a Golden Sun, keeps two cards in hand. So we are really looking at this like, oh, is this Pummel? Is this the third Pummel? And the reason we're wondering if it's the third Pummel is that Victor used Tunic instead of pitching. If these were two reds in Victor's hand, if these are both Choke Slams or Spinal Crush or something, Victor could have pitched one to the Golden Sun and saved Tunic. 
but he didn't. And he has two cards and we're thinking, well, if one is a blue and one is a pummel, what does that mean? We have a Blood Rush and Arsenal. We have two Beast Withins in hand, a blue and a Command and Conquer. What we would love to do here is block with Command and Conquer just to get rid of it so that our Blood Rush is guaranteed to discard a Beast Within. Uh, if we hold on to the CMC, there is a 33% chance that we don't discard a Beast Within, and then we're kind of sad. If the Golden Sun gets pummeled, and we have not blocked with Command and Conquer, we could discard that to the Pummel. At the same time, if we blocked with the Command and Conquer, and we get pummeled, we just discard a Beast Within, draw a card, and now we still have a Beast Within, and a 50% chance to discard it to Blood Rush Bellow. So what I would like to do here is block with CNC and Bonebreaker. Uh, block three, or block four, take three, make a Might, put us up to seven Mights, and if we get pummeled, great, we discard a Beast Within. If we don't get pummeled, great, we discard a Beast Within to Blood Rush Bellow and have a massive turn. The play I make, except that I undo block and then just pass, um, hedging on pummel, but I, I think that the downside of uh, Victor, or the upside of Victor not having Pummel is outweighed by the downside of him not having it. Where now we just have this Command and Conquer, and it's kind of awkward. We would much rather have three more life than the CNC, and the CNC gets discarded to the Blood Rush. So now we're in a weird position where, oh, it really would have been nice if one of these Beast Withins was something else, and we had three more life. We draw into a pulping, um, which we can play here. Uh, it puts us in a weird spot where, because we have two floating resources, uh, we only have a 50% chance of discarding a beast within instead of a 66% chance. We could Mandible Claw first so that we get to pitch Rekoromp to the pulping and get that 66 to discard a beast within, but if our pulping misses, which is very unlikely, we've seen three blood rushes and two cast bones. There's only one miss left in our deck, but it could be there. If our pulping misses, we really would have liked for the agility to affect the pulping. Additionally, we have six mites and a blood rush. So our pulping is attacking for 14 and very likely has dominate. That's gonna be hard for Victor to put block in front of. He only has three armor left. So if he has a test of strength and three block, he's taking seven at minimum, potentially more. Uh, I think opening with pulping here is fine. We do miss the 50% on a beast within. Uh, Victor does have the test of strength and is gonna give us a total of five resources, correctly not blocking the civic steps. The Stonewall Gauntlets don't matter and we do win our clash, which is really cool because we get a gold and just the fact that we did clash tells us that we have a bear fangs on top of our deck. So, our maximum damage prior to getting a gold for the rest of this turn was 13. We pitch a beast within to attack with Mandible Claw for five go again, and then we pitch a blue to attack with beast within for eight. Our maximum damage just went up by two because we can still pitch beast within, attack with claw, but now we can pitch second beast within to gold, draw a bear fangs, then attack with bear fangs, for 10 instead of 8. But we don't have to break gold right now. The first thing we can do is just attack with Mandible Claw because we're going to attack with Claw no matter what. And we get to see what's in Victor's hand, how he blocks. He has to block this. So we get more information before we decide what we want to do, depending on how blocks go. Maybe we just attack with Beast Within and keep a Bear Fangs on top of our deck. Victor blocks four and goes to three, with Victor being at three. 
Beast Within attacks for eight. Victor blocks six from hand, takes two, and goes to one. But if we attack with Bear Fangs, if we attack for two more damage, unless Victor has four blocks, which he doesn't, we can pretty safely assume that Victor does not have another test of strength or a sink below because he could have used it to block the mandible claw and didn't. And what that tells us, if he only has seven block total between two, three blocks in hand and a spring tunic, is that bear fangs for 10 wins the game, where beast within for eight does not. So we are gonna break our gold, we are going to draw this bear fangs, and then we're gonna attack for 10. Very likely 10, we don't know that it's 10. If we do uh, draw discard, a miss. We don't. Bear Fangs attacks for 10. We even win this clash. And that is the game. So, that's why I think that KO has a really good game into Victor, is we just have Cast Bones, Blood Rush Bellow, really good two card hands. And with Victor's gearing up more towards Zen, the nice thing about playing in a meta where the top deck is a ninja is that the same disruption that works on ninja does not work on brute um cnc pummel is always going to be strong but unlike ninja brute has beast within so we can discard beast within to the pummel and replace it guardian can run crush the weak against ninja which is really effective at stopping them against brute crush the weak is terrible so if guardians are gearing up hard towards ninja ko is going to be in a really good spot victors don't need to run all of these big attacks righteous cleansing disable thunderquake red because he is going to win his clashes a lot more easily against ninja with all of their ones and twos which puts ko in a really good spot to win clashes and that's what we saw so I think that KO is a great pick against the decks that beat Zen. Now, can KO beat Zen very well? No. Um, we can run a bunch of disruption. Zen still uh, explodes very well and has the armor suite to block even a might enhanced command and conquer amnesia weakest link. But we can do well and we can't beat the decks that beat Zen. So I feel good about continuing to play KO leading up to Amsterdam, and hopefully you enjoy this game. Hopefully you learn something, especially all my KO grinders out there who are looking at bringing our uh, green boy here to Pro Tour. If you did, be sure to assault and batter that like button. My comments are always open for any questions or feedback. If you have not already done so, please consider a YouTube subscription. It's free. It helps me out. I have a Patreon. I have a Twitter. Links are in the video description below. And until the next time I see you back on Daily Fab Gameplay, take care.